Canada today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons' command. Cartamba se porte la paya, il se porte la qua. Don estuale tu epopeia, de flubriant sexua. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. We stand on guard for thee. Let's open the doors. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us tonight the Honourable Member for Saint Laurent. Over 30 years, Canada's Foreign Affairs Minister François-Philippe Champagne paid an official visit to Greece to discuss the conflict in the Eastern Mediterranean with Prime Minister Mitsotaki and his Greek counterpart. And speaking of Greece, today, October 28, Greeks around the world are celebrating Ohi Day, perhaps not altogether like other years, but virtually and in spirit, to commemorate 80 years since Prime Minister Ioannis Metaxas' response to Benito Mussolini's ultimatum to allow the Axis forces to enter Greece or to go to War. Metaxas bravely responded, Alors c'est la guerre. The Greeks held the Germans back for six weeks and played a pivotal role in the outcome of World War II. Referring to their role in this war, Winston Churchill said, Hence, we shall not say that Greeks fight like heroes, but that heroes fight like Greeks. Zito Yelada, Zito Canadas, Zito Ikos Tiordoi Octovriu. The Honourable Member for Essex. Mr. Speaker, early in 2020, the town of Kingsville lost a leader after a long and courageous battle with cancer. Robert Peterson, Bob to all those who knew and loved him, was a devoted husband to his beautiful wife, Audrey, and beloved by his many children and grandchildren. Bob served as Reeve, Deputy Reeve, and Council for many years. My friend, duck hunting buddy, and count, sorry, duck hunting buddy and political mentor is sorely missed. Mr. Speaker, my riding of Essex has five fantastic municipalities, Lakeshore, LaSalle, Amherstburg, Essex, and Kingsville, where Bob served. My staff and I have received thousands of cries for help. Our municipal politicians and their staff have no doubt done the same. Frontline workers wear many uniforms, Mr. Speaker, and yes, sometimes suits. Mr. Speaker, I ask this House to join me in extending a heartfelt thanks to my local mayors, Santos, Snively, Aldo, Bain and Bondi, the respective councils, as well as municipal representatives in ridings across Canada for their determination, resilience and hard work through it all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. The Honourable Member for Surrey Newton. Uh, the Honourable Member, I believe you might be on mute. Sorry. Mr. Speaker, on October 29th, Muslims across Canada will celebrate Milad on Nabi commemorating the birth, life, and message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, where even remotely in the times of a global pandemic, happiness, harmony, and love will be exchanged with family, friends, and neighbors. More than ever, the divine blessings of Allah will fill homes with hope, joy, and optimism in the challenging times, so all those that those are celebrating in Newton, in Surrey, and all across Canada. Those are observing Eid Malad on Nabi. Peace be with you, Allah Hafiz. The Honourable, the Honourable, the Honourable Member for Beauport Limoilou. Mr. Speaker, Today, I'd like to pay tribute to the strength, resilience, and high sense of mutual support that characterize the people of Beauport-Limoilou. 
when it's time to donate clothes to organizations or food to the free self-serve fridges like the one placed near the Patro Rocamadour, or to volunteer for places like Oak Pack, Autonomie Les Moilous, La Cuisine Collective de Beauport, Entraide Agapé, La Bouche et Généreuse, Le Cab 23, or Le Pivot, everyone pitches in to alleviate the hardships faced by others. To those organizations, I would add those who provide mental health support, such as La Fondation Cerveau, La Boussole, and Le Cercle Polaire, to name a few, since Port Limalou has more than a hundred of them. These individuals and organizations show that Beauport Limalou has generous people living there, always ready to work together to help each other out, whatever life throws in our path. Together, we are stronger. The Honourable Member for Brossard, Brossard Saint Lambert. Mr. Speaker, we're approaching the end of Women's History Month in Canada, and I'd like to take this opportunity to highlight, with great emotion, some of the women who've marked the history of Brossard Saint Lambert. To honour, warrant our gratitude and admiration, because through hard work, conviction, and sheer stubbornness, they moved mountains of resistance to change. In 1965, Olga Melikoff, Muriel Parks, and Valerie Neal were the activist mothers who moved to create bilingual education in the St. Lambert Elementary School. Thus was born French immersion in Canada. In 1983, in 1983 Josette Lemieux Lepage became Brossard's first woman mayor. She had heart and wit and was the driving force behind the creation of the local library in 1976. She was also behind the 1989 Brossard Declaration, making Brossard the first municipality in Canada to declare itself multicultural. Unfortunately, I don't have time to talk about all the women who've made Brossard Saint Lambert such an extraordinary riding. But know this, my dear women, you have my deep gratitude. The Honourable, the Honourable Member for Beauce. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to highlight the work today of Nicole Jacques, the CEO of Moisson Beauce. This regional food bank, purveyors of happiness for over 25 years, has served some 12 million kilos of goods for a value of $63 million to some 60 organizations in the area. Ms. Jacques is a fighter, and she's been dedicated with heart for 12 years to this organization. She's kept her calm and met the challenge of feeding those affected by historic flooding in 2019, as well as the pandemic. She also made sure that this organization grew like a beautiful flower. The food bank now receives more than three times more customers than when it opened. Thank you, Ms. Jacques, for all the work you've done to help the people of Beauce when they were in need. Thank you for bringing around you all these high-quality partners and such a dedicated team. I wish you all the best for the future. Happy retirement, Nicole. For Niagara Centre. Mr. Speaker, October marks 65 years since Canada and the United States exchanged formal instruments of ratification for the Convention on the Great Lakes Fishery, creating the Great Lakes Fishery Commission. This treaty solidified a binational partnership that focused on perpetuating Great Lakes science, cross-border relationships, and the control of the invasive sea lamprey parasite basin-wide. And this partnership has yielded, Mr. Speaker, numerous benefits worth billions of dollars and thousands of jobs annually. In fact, ending divided governance by ensuring that federal, state, and provincial agencies and fishery management professionals work towards a collective benefit is one of the treaty's greatest achievements. Turning back a trend established prior to the treaty where an everyone for themselves mentality assured an ecological race to the bottom. Mr. Speaker, I congratulate the GLFC on 65 years of su success. I look forward to working together to further strengthen the Canada-US partnership in the years ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable Member for Etobicoke Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I'm sure everybody is aware, today is National Chocolate Day. But everybody is aware that Saturday is Halloween, and normally families would be getting all ready for the excitement that Halloween brings. When our kids are older, they won't remember every Halloween, but they will remember this one, Mr. Speaker. So let's focus on not what we can't do, but let's focus on what we can do. Let's this make, make this a Halloween that every kid wants to remember for the rest of their life. Use your ghoulish imagination, be creative, but stay home, stay safe, watch a horror movie, and have fun. Now, I want to give a special shout out to my two nieces who are currently in Thunder Bay, Kira and Keegan, and my niece in Vancouver, Caitlin. 
And a special shout out to my nephew Brogan, who is turning 13 today. Mr. Speaker, that in itself is very scary, let me tell you. So enjoy Halloween, everybody. Be creative. And Brogan, happy birthday, buddy. The Honourable Member for Northumberland, Peterborough South. A close friend of mine lost a family member. I experienced the singing pain of suicide. Unfortunately, suicide is the second leading cause of death among youth and young adults. 60% of youth reported, suicidal youth reported wanting to speak to someone but not knowing where to turn. This issue is, it has been exacerbate, exacerbated and worsened by the COVID pandemic. In these times of heightened fear, stress and loneliness, I would like to encourage everyone in this house and outside to take a moment and reach out to your loved ones. Check in on them. Let them know they are not alone. Remind them that you love them. And please, please go home tonight and give your children a hug. The Honourable Member for Avalon. Mr. Speaker, this week I had the pleasure of visiting Smalling Land Farm located on the southern shore here in Avalon. This facility is the brainchild of Larry Pottister and his family and will be the first large scale organic farm in the province. Four years ago, Larry lost his son to suicide and since then has been working to provide mental health resources and to eliminate stigma. They started the Jacob Pottister Memorial Foundation and continue to honor his memory through Smalling Land Farm. This facility is truly impressive. It will be home to organic duck egg production, year round organic greenhouses, millions of organic bees and so much more. It will be home to a certified horse therapy program for at-risk youth. The Pottister family haven't given up on the people of this province. They haven't given up on our economy and are committed to giving others a leg up. I would like to congratulate Smalling Land Farm on pushing forward a vision of food sustainability, healthy living and mental health awareness. I wish Larry and his family success now and well into the future. Honourable Member for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to take this opportunity to wish my daughter Kenzie a happy sixth birthday. I'm sad to be away from home today, but as we celebrated her birthday this past weekend, I was able to assure her that I was needed in Ottawa to fight for a better Canada, one where she can grow up in a free and prosperous society. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, I have concern for her and her sister's future, as her home province of Saskatchewan currently has the highest number of cases of domestic violence among all the provinces. And while Saskatchewan has recently passed a law that would allow police to disclose information that would help protect potential victims of interpersonal violence, unfortunately, the RCMP are not able to comply with Claire's law, as they are bound by a federal privacy law. As such, I'm asking the Ministers of Justice and Public Safety to amend the Privacy Act and enable the RCMP in Saskatchewan to comply with Claire's law and ultimately protect our loved ones from potential abuse at the hand of their partners. The Honourable Member for Selkirk Interlake Eastman. Mr. Speaker, 2020 marks 100 years since the end of Canada's first national internment operations during the First World War. Canada labelled naturalized Canadians from Ukraine and other regions in Europe as enemy aliens. The government confiscated their land, property and cash assets and imprisoned 8,600 people in internment camps for years and used them as forced labourers. My grandparents, my Bubba and Guido, were shamefully considered enemy aliens. Yet at the same time, my Bubba's brother was proudly fighting for Canada in the 44th Battalion. Although they are allowed to work their farm, being enemy aliens meant a weekly 20-mile horse ride to report into the closest RCMP station during the Great War and for another two years after the signing of the armistice. The internment of Ukrainians and other Eastern Europeans in Canada was a grave injustice. It's important to educate all Canadians on the entirety of Canada's history, including our darkest moments. Today, on National Internment Education Day, we remember the innocent lives lost and all those who were impacted. Vichnaya Paimyat for all who perished. The Honourable Member for London, Fanshawe. My constituent, Catelyn Top, was about halfway through her maternity leave when COVID-19 hit. When she returned to work as a server in August, her hours were cut. She cannot place her daughter into childcare and is denied financial assistance because Catelyn didn't have a spot before the pandemic. Another constituent, Carrie Cooper, reached out to me about her friend, a recent master's graduate and new mother. She is raising four children and is an advocate for student mothers at King's University. But Carrie's friend, like Catelyn, is ineligible for all supports. The CERB, the CESB, the recovery 
recovery benefit and EI. These women are unable to begin a return to careers because they can't afford full-time childcare, and like so many parents, they don't know where to turn. Women are used to fighting for their rights, for fairness, for equality, and for support because of their gender. They have been left out because of specific decisions of this government. When will governments understand that real progress requires programs like universal affordable childcare that is accessible for everyone? The Honourable Member for Abitibi to Miskaming. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The, an organization is, in Montreal is celebrating its 25th anniversary today, and I would invite people to visit their Facebook page. It's a special occasion for me, Mr. Speaker, because I spent six years working there. If there are so many young people here in the House, I think it's largely thanks to organizations like th the one I'm talking about. And a lot of work was done to encourage people to stay in school and to enter into leadership positions like boards of directors. It's important for young people everywhere to get interested in politics and public life. and. That's why I'm here today. I'm sure they influenced a lot of people. And so I'd like to say thank you. And I'd like to tell young people listening, get involved. Your, your spot is waiting for you. Thank you. My riding of Portage Lisgar is a shining example of how Canadians have stepped up and helped each other during the pandemic. An example like Winkler Business Ironman Industries, who adjusted their business to build mobile hand washing stations. Or Tyler Moran, also of Winkler, who, made, who manufactured face mask extenders for frontline workers. Or RV part manufacturer Icon Technology, who switched their production to face shields. Then, Mr. Speaker, there are Altona residents Melanie Schrader and Brenda Drieger. They made and donated hundreds of masks to truck drivers and healthcare workers. And in Portage La Prairie, with the help of many volunteers, the Portage Community Revitalization Corporation, the Family Resource Centre and the Portage MCC opened up a soup kitchen to help those in need during the pandemic. The strength of a community is boosted when people come together to help each other. And Portage Lisgar has always been a strong and giving region. Thank you so much, Portage Lisgar. You are true community heroes. The Honourable Member for Pierre.